Have you ever been uh, deserted by one whom you trusted and loved with all your heart? So, have you ever experienced a betrayal, betrayal, denial by one you loved with all your heart? Okay, just uh, yes or no. <clears throat> I have a ship. Okay. One of my disciple, like cannot. She, I loved so much, and then it was so sincere. All of a sudden, disappear, and then yeah, I feel that time it was really hot. Okay, that uh, if uh, your answer is no, then you can skip number two. But if your answer is yes, we go to number two. If yes, how did you feel at that time? So you said that you were really hurt, right? I uh, feel <clears throat> hurt. I don't want to do anything more. Mm. Like a, no desire to do anything. Yeah, powerless all of a sudden. I put my hope, my expectation, my kind of it really closed mm. uh, connection. It all of a sudden and torn out mm. my heart. Mm. So, okay. I feel so empty. Uh, so it is very painful experience, very painful experience. Question three, discuss the differences to betray Jesus, to disown Jesus, to be ashamed of Jesus, mm -hmm. and never betray Jesus, never disown Jesus, never be ashamed of Jesus. So, what is a little, little bit deeper? What is to betray Jesus? Betray meaning is against Jesus, turn around totally. So, going opposite way. Or Isn't that dis disown Jesus? <clears throat> disown Jesus is the uh, same as deny Jesus. Deny, deny Jesus. It's like disown a, Jesus. I, I don't have any connection with him. This own, it's yeah. Like, oh, I don't know him. Uh -huh. Ignoring, right? Betray is stronger than that. Uh, betray is meaning is against mm -hmm. will or uh, become traitor. Traitor, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, join the enemy side mm -hmm. and then you know turn against. So easy example. Uh, Judas betrayed Jesus. He went to the religious leaders and then uh, decided, to, yeah. Yeah, decided to hand over, sell Jesus for 30 coins, silver coins. Silver coin. That's <clears throat> betray Jesus. Deny Jesus is a little bit, I guess, less, less to deny Jesus, disown Jesus. Uh, disciples case, they didn't intend. Betray was premeditated, you know, planned. That's so evil. But the, uh, when Peter denied Jesus, Peter disowned Jesus, it, it wasn't planned at all. Just uh, out of fear. Or because uh, if they follow Jesus, they might be killed. So they deny Jesus, disadvantage, you cannot follow Jesus anymore because of a damage in their life. To me, here is the word of God and here is my own thinking, my own thought at that time, choose my own thinking is deny Jesus because deny <coughs> Jesus word. It is, I mean, it is very common. Very often it happens in our inner mind that even though we know God's words says like this, but we still follow my own thinking. That's a deny Jesus too. 
What's that? To be ashamed of Jesus. Don't want to mention <clears throat> like that. Um, I mean, one person said um, when he eat, he eat outside. He doesn't pray. So, <laughs> I mean, at work, I, in the lounge, there are Christian, non-Christian, other religion. I don't care. We just pray. Before I eat my lunch, I pray. But uh, the Christian, he said he doesn't pray. <laughs> So I, I guess he's a little bit ashamed of being showing Christian. Apostle Paul said, he, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God. So Apostle Paul is not ashamed of Because uh, even now, some people, uh, they are so faithful, cheerful in, inside the church. But when they go outside, mingle with unbelievers, they don't show that they are Christian because they are ashamed of. So, <clears throat> never to betray Jesus, never deny Jesus, never ashamed of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus' face Believers, how believers treat Jesus. Some believers betray Jesus. Some believers mm -hmm. deny Jesus by rejecting Jesus' word. Some believers are ashamed of Jesus. But I don't know if there is anyone who never betrayed, never denied Jesus' word, never ashamed of Jesus. Because I feel I did the all. I feel I did. I betrayed Jesus. I denied Jesus. Mm. I was ashamed of Jesus. Yeah. So think about Jesus' mind. Today, Bible study start from here, thinking about how Jesus would feel because his disciples, one betrays him and 11 will deny him. And then many other believers will be ashamed of Jesus. You think Jesus will not go on anymore? So let's study um, from there Jesus' mind. If we have never been denied or rejected by loved ones, it's hard to understand Jesus' mind. Okay, we move on to question four. Well, what did Jesus say to his disciples? <clears throat> Jesus said, you will all fall away. Yeah, you will all fall away. Probably this conversation took place uh, when they left the Passover meal and then on the way to Gethsemane. It's a not a long road, but Jesus mentioned in the in the in the Greek Bible. It says, uh, "All you will be offended." And then, what's that? Uh, Calvin commentary add offended at me. And then, NIV, ESD, we read it. You will all fall away. <coughs> mm. 
new RSV, I don't have a King James. You will all become deserters. You will all become deserters. Uh, e. So this meaning really uh, comes clear to me. You will desert me. You will abandon me. Mm. You know. Okay. Next question. Question five. Um, through what one means does Jesus see is happening? Yeah. Mm. Can I erase it? Please. Through what means? It is written. Yeah, it is written. Um, is it written? <laughs> I will strike the shepherd, shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Okay, we let's go to Zechariah chapter 13. We need to read it. Let's read um, 7 through 9. Let's read it um, all together. Zechariah. Yeah. 7 through 9. Ready? What chapter? Chapter 13. Verse 7 oh, through 9. Okay. Let's read. Away with the sword, sword okay, against my, my shepherd, shepherd, against, against the, man the man who is close, close to me, me declares the Lord Almighty. Strike, strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. And I will turn my hand against the little ones. In, in the whole land, declares the Lord, two-thirds two will, will be struck down and perish, yet one-third will be left in it. This third I will, I will bring into the fire. I will, will refine them like silver and test them like gold. And they will call on my name, and I will answer them. I will say, they are my people, and they will say, the Lord, the Lord is our God. God. Uh, Jesus brought this uh, uh, prophecy. This prophecy says, the shepherd <clears throat> will be killed. And the sheep will scatter. So Jesus said, All of you fall away because the shepherd will die. So after that, God will bring the remnant. The remnant God will bring them into fire. God will refine their faith like a silver and God will refine them like a silver, like a gold. How? <clears throat> when they are in fire, they are they're gonna cry out to God. Lord help me. 
Lord, have mercy on me. They are desperate, asking God's help. They will call on me. They will call on my name, and I will answer them. Then, conclusion, God will say, they are, you are my people, and they will say, you are our God. So coming out, victory. So <clears throat> when you look at this prophecy, when Jesus killed all the disciples, abandon him. <clears throat> Is there any hope? There is no hope. It's over. Everything over. Jesus' ministry is over. Nothing. Jesus died. And the disciples all gone. Nothing left. But God will raise. God will raise. God will discipline their faith. Like a they may be like going through fire and they will be refined like a pure silver, pure gold. Burn up all the junk, corruptible, simple nature. Only will remain pure gold, mm -hmm. pure faith. And then it will come out to victory. Mm -hmm. This is how Jesus understand his trial. He will go through torture, crucifixion, and he will be, uh, die and be buried. All his disciples will run away. It seems like it is the end, but it is not. God will. God will raise his disciples. God will bring his disciples into the fire. Melt down. And then they will truly cry out to God. You know, they prayed 10 days in the upper room. 120 uh, believers. And the Holy Spirit came and came out as a victors, mm. victory. This is the course Jesus understand before his death. This will be like this. He understood the situation like that. That's why Jesus said, disciples, you will all fall away. But Jesus knew it's not the end. It's going to be Gather again through fire. And then <coughs> God will, God will bring them back. God will uh, refine their face. Okay, this is what Jesus' understanding is. He's suffering his death, his burial, all the failures of his disciples, yet there is cast. God's victory plan. God will restore them. Okay. Um, question six. What does uh, verse 14, 28 mean? <clears throat> Twenty-eight saying. But after I have reason, yeah. I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Yeah. Uh, Jesus will go to Galilee and then will wait for them. So give them direction, though they will be scared. And so they will be scattered by fear. 
and but well, but they should remember what Jesus said. Jesus will go to Galilee, and they all gotta go and wait for uh, the meet for Jesus, meet Jesus, mm. according to this direction. Yeah, good. After I have risen, after resurrection, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. I mean. Jesus gives them direction, right? Instruction. But the, this has some more, more, to me, uh, has more meaning. Jesus will, <clears throat> Jesus will, Regroup failed the disciples. Failed the disciples. Mm. And then according to the prophecy of Zechariah, God recovered it. This is Jesus. Recovery plan. He's gonna recover them in Galilee. <coughs> this is Jesus' victory plan. Very, very important. So I put it as a title. But the most important about this instruction is even though Jesus, Jesus knows that all his disciples will desert him, deny him, How he gave this instruction? Meet me in Galilee. I will go ahead of you. I will go before you. How could he give them instruction? Because you know, somebody really backstabbed me. He wanted to see me three times. And three times I rejected her. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see you. <laughs> But Jesus, you know, uh, disciples will deny him. And then how? Jesus raised them like uh, uh, own sons, own, own children, 24-7. Jesus gave all himself for them, and then they denied Jesus. How can Jesus work again with them? It will be good if Jesus doesn't see them anymore. You are not worthy. How can you deny me? I mean, it's just, it's hard. Human mind, it is hard to work together with this. Jesus said, you know, after my resurrection, come to Galilee because I will go before you. That means Jesus already forgave them. Here it is in this instruction. Forgiveness. If Jesus has any anger, you know, Shepherd Charlie said earlier, his mind was empty. He has no desire. He's hurting his mind, no desire to do anything. But Jesus forgave them. Because he forgave the disciples, he gave them instruction, come to Galilee. Because I will go before you. I will go ahead of you and I will wait for you. All of you, come to Galilee. Wow. 
This is amazing. It is. <clears throat> it is. It is amazing. It is. It is more amazing because uh, uh, when people deny me in my world, uh, you know, I avoid them. <laughs> if possible, I try to not to see them, not to uh, work together with them. But Jesus has no grudges, no empty feeling. Jesus forgave them, that's why he gave them this direction. So, amazing grace of Jesus. Question seven. One more. The disciples to them. <clears throat> so, what must the one disciples more. do then? Do? They must huh? come back to Jesus. This is a conversation on the way to Gethsemane. Mm. They were walking. They are walking in the dark, uh, like a around the midnight, you know, they are walking. So why did, when they heard about this Jesus teaching, what should they do? Jesus said, you will all fall away because Zechariah prophecy is Jesus will die and all the disciples were scared. So what should the disciples do when they heard this Jesus teaching? Humble themselves, uh, probably ask uh, more detailed direction, guidance, and then uh, I guess they will, they will ask more seriously what will really happen to Jesus and what do they need to do. Yeah, yeah. Humble, be humble. Mm. Wow. Unbelievable. Will I deny Jesus? <laughs> Unbelievable. That's what Jesus said. Humble. And then they are not aware of their own weakness. They are not aware of. But they should be aware of their own weakness. Wow. And then they should pray. They should pray. <coughs> they should pray not to deny Jesus. They should pray not to deny Jesus. Humble. Yes. Okay, question nine. Ah, uh, no, no. Question eight. But what did Peter declare? Peter declared, even if all fall away, I will not. Yeah. Peter declared, not me. There are 11 disciples left in there. And Jesus, the Peter said, maybe 10 may deny, may deny Jesus. Eleven. 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 So, but one, Peter, she said, no. They may deny Jesus, but not me, Peter said. Except me. I'm not that kind of a person. Hmm. I will never deny Jesus. He he says, probably, probably other 10 disciples deny Jesus, but he is not that kind of person. Peter, uh, he, he said, I'm not that kind of a person. He has a spiritual intuition. Mm -hmm. He already knew Jesus is the Son of God and Savior, mm -hmm. Messiah. Mm -hmm. So he will not. Yeah. I will not. I will 
except me. Others may deny Jesus, but not me. Uh, okay, question nine. What does Peter think about himself? <clears throat> he himself is uh, better than other disciples. Okay, he is better than yeah. others, um, other disciples. And in his reasoning, Jesus is for sure Son of God and Savior. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has a faith yeah. in Jesus. Right. He loves Jesus. He loves Jesus more than others. He he uh, left over everything what he had and then obey right away mm -hmm. and experience many things, catching fishes, mm -hmm. walking under uh, mm -hmm. Galilee, Sea of uh, Galilee, and many experience, miracle. Yeah. The, also, he said, not me, you know. Not me. So I will not. I will not. So he is faithful to Jesus, even to death. Mm -hmm. He will be faithful to Jesus, even to death. So this is self confidence. He had in himself this self-confidence. Self-confidence. He loves Jesus. He is faithful. He will follow Jesus even to death or prison. Self-confidence. And <clears throat> self-righteous. So when he is, he is a hundred percent confident because he's going to follow Jesus even to death. Mm -hmm. uh, so when people have a self-confidence like this, for sure, never doubt, then they don't pray <laughs> because a hundred percent for sure. I mean, it's going to be 100% for sure, what should they pray? Mm -hmm. So, people who are confident 100%, they don't pray. And so then, it opens door to Satan. Mm -hmm. Satan, <clears throat> Satan gets this kind of people. Self-confidence, don't mm -hmm. pray, and then door is open to Satan. So in a gospel, look, Jesus said, the Satan is trying to win out the, uh, <laughs> uh -huh, win out the, uh, uh, play with Peter, a man who is confident and don't pray. And Satan come again. We had earlier, what should the disciples do? Be humble and accept that there is a danger. <coughs> So they, they should kneel down and humbly pray. That's the way supposed to. But Peter, Peter was not, not me. Peter showed his confidence, his own faith in Jesus and don't pray. And then Satan was playing with him. When uh, we study this same yesterday, it is uh, obvious. Self-confident people don't pray and then knocked down by Satan. But uh, those who are not confident, humble, pray, and they are not tempted. Okay, question 10. What does Jesus know about Peter and other disciples? 
they are uh, they are very weak, and without Holy Spirit, without Jesus' help, it's just mere human being easily get tempted and feel empty, feel uh, aimless life, and catching throwing net with a uh, endeavor and effort, but gain nothing. That's uh, life. Let's, re let's re read the reference verse. Oh, okay, first, oh, 14, 30. I will tell you the truth, Jesus answered. Today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows, twice you yourself will disown me three times. Okay. So when Peter said, I will not fall away, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, just tonight, not tomorrow, <laughs> tonight, at uh, only three, four hours later on, you will deny me three times. That's, no matter what Peter said, I will never deny you. Maybe others may, but not me. But Jesus said, the truth is you will deny me three times tonight. How about other disciples, verse 50? They just deserted Jesus and um, fled. Everybody deserted him and fled. Jesus know what's going to happen. Uh, okay. When Jesus said, Jesus said that you are going to deny me three times, what was Peter's uh, response? Verse 31. Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. Yes. He didn't listen to Jesus. He didn't listen to Jesus. He still, he still insists his own righteousness. He's not listening. But he insists. Even if maybe Jesus was saying wrong. <laughs> Peter's mind. Ah, Jesus doesn't trust me. Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. So, in his self-righteousness, Peter didn't listen to Jesus. <coughs> <coughs> Question 11. How did Peter influence other disciples? Oh. Yes, uh, Peter, again, he said, I have to die with you. I will never disown you. And all, all other disciples also follow. Same. He said the same, same. same thing. Right. So, here is a, uh, This was Jesus teaching. This Jesus wanted to teach them before crisis. Jesus was teaching them that Jesus will die and then disciples will scatter. But God will restore them. based on prophecy of Zechariah. Jesus want to give this message 
you will fall away. So Jesus will die and you will fall away. But God will restore them. So they will come out victory. It, it is now Jesus going through unbelievable crisis. He will be arrested, tortured, die. All his disciples will run away. But God will restore them. God will bring them to victory. Jesus wanna teach them. But Peter, in his self-righteousness, This teaching deviated the life. It went to this way. And other disciples uh, couldn't teach. Jesus couldn't teach. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Peter's self righteousness led all others, himself, all others, carried away. They, they, they carried away. They couldn't listen to Jesus. Because uh, mm -hmm. Peter's self-righteousness, self-confidence, self-righteousness. Okay. Okay, question, next question. What advice can you give to Peter and other disciples? Oh, what, what? That's a, the disciples need to be <laughs> listen to Jesus. <laughs> okay, you wanna give the advice? Please listen to Jesus. Peter and disciples, listen to Jesus. Be listen. humble. <laughs> be humble. Listen to Jesus. And then, what advice can you give to the disciples? Mm. <clears throat> I think they still they were so excited about what's going to happen after eating. So I think prayer is uh, like a moment by moment prayer is mm -hmm. always, it is, I mean, if we stay in this world, we need to pray every moment. Cannot say anything for sure for tomorrow and for our way. Well, we don't really know what's going to happen. Uh -huh. They don't know themselves. Mm -hmm. They don't know how weak they are. They don't know. They don't know their heart is not good, corrupted. <clears throat> you know, when Peter said, I will never deny you. I will never disown you. The moment I think it's true. He's uh, telling truthfully. Mm -hmm. But he's telling it because he doesn't know how, how simple he is, how weak he is. When I go to a marriage ceremony, I see a marriage vow. It is uh, so beautiful. Only death will depart. Mm -hmm. And will you do your life together? Uh, even poverty and what else, the sickness uh, and you know all this together, and I do. And uh, uh, will you get together until death depart you? I do. It's so beautiful. I think that moment they are really uh, believe that's truth. You know that they really uh, believe when they make the. Marriage vow, but it doesn't take even uh, sixty-eight days. <laughs> it doesn't take six months or two one, years. One week. One week, because I, I, uh, I met one person. She said she divorced. One week after one week. One week. I mean, the moment I think is true, really true. But when they make that vow, beautiful vow, they don't know. 
how simple their heart is, how weak their heart is. So that when the time comes, I mean, everybody break the vow, everybody. Uh, it's like that, disciples, when Peter says, I will never fall away, I will never deny you. When he said that, that moment, it was correct, it was right. But after three, four hours, he denied Jesus. He doesn't know how weak he is. How simple it is human mind? Human mind is so corrupted, mm. so weak, and that when the situation comes, changes, changes. That is human heart. And Peter didn't know. Other disciples didn't know. That's why they are so self righteous. Uh, Okay, question thir uh, 13. 13. Compare Jesus and the disciples on how they face coming crisis. They act exactly normal. Normal people, uh, how they do. Here, like... look, crisis is coming. Jesus will die. And then, huge crisis is coming. How Jesus face this crisis? How the disciples face the crisis? They were so, <coughs> so same. So uh, exactly right what Jesus said. Yeah. First, Jesus. How Jesus faced his crisis? His arrest, his suffering, crucifixion. Obey to God. He went deny, through. Deny. He went through. He was holding God's will. God's words. He was holding God's words. Deny himself. Pray. God's words. Zechariah chapter 13, 7 through 9. He was holding this God's words. And he got the insight. He truly believed his own death. He will die, and disciples were scared. Disciples were useless, denied Jesus, all fled. But that's not the end. God will bring them into fire. God will refine them. God will restore them. And then they will be eventually coming out victory. Jesus holding, Jesus truly believes this Zechariah prophecy. He really believed. So even though he himself must die, his disciples gone, to Jesus is not the end. And God's restoration is coming after that battle. So Jesus could go. He had unshakable faith in God's promise. Unshakable. He, he believed. I mean, people face betrayal, denial. All people do is because of a pain. Cry, 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 cry. Day and night cry. But Jesus did not. He was betrayed and he will be denied or abandoned by his disciples. But regardless of the situation, he was firmly holding the God's words. God's words. So he went through the suffering. He went through death. He saw his disciples 
all ran away. But God's words will come true. After that, God will restore them. This is Jesus' preparation going through crisis. How about disciples? How they are going facing the crisis? The disciples. They have a self-confidence. Self-confidence. I can do it. I can do it. Peter is the leader, everybody follow. I can do it, we can do it. I am, even to death, I will follow Jesus. Self-confidence. When they saw Jesus' arrest, Jesus' uh, uh, you know, suffering, they all ran away. Peter denied Jesus three times. And they all ran away, bled, bled, because uh, great fear, fear came. They couldn't overcome this fear. So they were hundreds of percent confident men. They were hundreds of percent. <laughs> Extreme to extreme. And then they gathered in the upper room and crying, weeping. Self confidence is and not pray is uh, filthy human nature <laughs> Jesus holding so Jesus was firm all this course Jesus was firm because he believed God's words he stayed firm he was not Shaking at all. Um, last question. <clears throat> How and uh, why did Jesus tell this to his disciples who neither understood or nor accepted his words? They may learn lesson later. You know, um, when people don't accept me, I even don't talk. <laughs> even don't talk. What's a waste of my time, waste of my energy. I talk and then don't listen. Why should I talk? But the disciples neither understood nor accepted Jesus' word, but Jesus was telling them. So to me, to me, you know, they were so stubborn. Disciples were so stubborn. And then even though Jesus said, this very night, you're going to deny me three times, still don't believe, don't accept. How stubborn, you know, I cannot work with that kind of people. But Jesus are already in his, Plan. In his plan, his, uh, Jesus already is in his recovery plan. Even before he died, Jesus already believed. Because he believed this God's words, he already included the disciples in this recovery plan, in this victory plan. Even though they didn't understand, they didn't accept, they didn't humble themselves. Jesus already cutting out this plan. Ten disciples, 
display included them included them because he's confident God will restore them if not why should Jesus tell them but Jesus was so confident so disciples were already in this recovery prayer in this victory prayer okay we study up to here and uh, let's share our what we learned today.